Buhari and battling mm. to cope with last minute pressure. Mm. Why we pick Akwabio by Shatima? Buhari seeks not to pay $556 million, 98.5 million pounds, and 226 billion Naira judgment debts. Nigeria airplane to fly, uh, or your chieftaincy bill passed. Okay. Story. Okay, I'm the major have one more. Sorry, state will no longer pay Paris Club refund. All right. Major headline, yeah. Buhari, I'm battling to cope with last minute pressure. So as we know, our current president is winding down on this administration. And he says he's under enormous pressure. So yesterday night, he was at the regimental dinner organized in his honor by the armed forces. And they did this at the newly commissioned Nigerian Armed Forces Mess in Asokoro Abuja. And they said he came late, which is very unusual of him. And wow. you see, I have to tell you, it's one activity to oh, the yeah. other, and that's why I'm mm. here late. But, you know, I cannot wait to get back to my hometown. But then he spoke to them. Um, so he was meeting with um, the members of the armed forces. They said the very top military yeah. um, people were there and all of them. And he <laughs> says to them... He said he paid his tribute to them for their unwavering loyalty, their hard work, dedication, and selfless service to our beloved nation. And then he also said that, um, that they should not relax until insurgency <clears throat> has been you know, dealt with. He just um, said that they should remain resolute in the face of the country's security challenges. Just really appreciated right. them, the sacrifices the that time. they have made for our country, and also encouraging them to not give up until you know, we squash this insurgency. I'm really happy for our president that he's, you know, looking forward to leaving. Mm. Most people don't look usually forward. look forward to leaving, but he seems to be in a good place. So good for him. See, any stories? <laughs> so the ad hoc uh, committee set up by the House of Representatives to investigate the volume of fuel consumed daily said yesterday that there is no data with the agencies of government of the actual volume of fuel yeah. consu consumed in the country daily. Uh, the committee also said the Ministry of Petroleum Resources and the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation does not have the records of the amount of money set by the government on subsidy daily on fuel consumption. And this scene came as a result of the fact that the House asked the federal government to conduct a forensic audit of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, NNPC, NNPCL, and they wanted them to give clarity to the direct supply and direct purchase uh, DSDP program and also the consortiums of DSDP operators so that they can get the discrepancies <laughs> on the uh, amount of fuel supplied and the amount of fuel received from 2015 till date. Mm. And now they are saying that there is no record, there is no data of the supply that has been made, there is no data of the subsidies that have been made from this. Uh, they went ahead to say um, all of the things that they expect right. uh, them to do, but it was just worrisome that we've been saying we've been spending money on subsidy and yet no records to even show what we're paying. Who is drinking all these things? Well, the, the, the reports always change to me because sometimes they'll give a figure. Yeah, so. They spend a subsidy, they sometimes they give it. So, all, so every day, the, 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 the figures are on which to, papers you're reading. Let me talk about the Nigerian Governors Forum. So, yesterday, uh, the chairman, uh, the former chairman, I mean, the Tambuwa, announced that um, the federal government um, has halted further deductions from their accounts to meet the local government council's London Paris Club obligations. And also they'll be refunding to them all that had been deducted uh, from their accounts according in connection with the loan uh, repayment. Um, this was great news to the governors. I mean, that they'll have more money because the, the money used to be directly deducted from their uh, accounts. Also, they were able to have the change, change, uh, change in leadership um, yesterday. So now the, governors, uh, the governor of Kwara State, Abdul Razak, uh, um, uh, will be the Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak, will be the one as the chairing the Nigerian Governors Forum. And he's going to be deputized by um, Governor of your state, Governor Makinde, who will be um, <clears throat> the vice chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum. That's a good thing. I mean, I mean, it's good to see how leadership is, is, is been changed with the Governors Forum. But I'm happy that the state government will also be able to get more money from the federal allocation as soon as they stop deducting these Paris Club refund. This is good news for many governors. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on now to the punch. There's not much story because Mr. Tompolo has taken up half the page on punch.
Mm. Uh, countdown to handover. FEC holds last session. Governors dissolve cabinets. And again, um, High Chief Government, Ikpemupolo, that's Tompolo, put up, um, uh, I think it's an editorial here. Um, yeah, sorry, an editorial here. Um, okay, which story are we taking? So I, I took a human interest story in the paper, and it's about a, a polytechnic student who sadly took his life. Um, they say that he was a student of the Federal Polytechnic Ilaro in Ogun State, Samuel Adiko Goke. His name is all, his picture is also on the paper. Handsome young man. Um, they said that um, he had used his money, the money that was given to him to pay for fees, to bet, and he lost it. And then on this particular day, he was talking with his friend, and the friend showed him an alert he had just received from home for his fees and found a way to get his friend's password and then went in and accessed that friend's um, bank account, took the money out, and used it for you know, for betting and lost that money. His friend had gone ahead, had gone to pay his fees and realized he didn't have any money, called his friend because he knew. And this one was upfront with him and said, I'm so sorry, this is what I use your money for, but I promise I'll pay you back. And even he said that he didn't have any fees. He was like, I'll oh, call your dad now, let's sort this out. So on the day that he was supposed to receive, he had not seen it. So he sort of told him, I'm coming. He, they waited about 30 minutes, he goes and he's seen... He sees him in distress. Apparently, he had taken an, a, a substance, insecticide, was rushed what? to a clinic. They tried to revive him, but unfortunately, he passed. The father was informed. He said, this is not the first time the boy has used the fees for something like that. The last session, what happened, mm. when he heard about it, he paid that. If he had heard about this one, he would have, he would have gone paid. ahead to pay yeah. for oh, it. God. But he said he could not receive take the body of the cops. I mean, he could not take the cops. Because, I don't know. For any, he said Maybe. the school should go ahead and bury him, but he couldn't mm -hmm. take Maybe it. Before. It's so sad. <clears throat> um, the students' union in the school tried to encourage them to go for counseling, you know, therapy, young people in the school. This is a major issue it is. amongst young people now. It's either they are into drugs or they're betting, and then one thing they think is to handle it is to... Just go. Suicide is yeah. sad. Can add the pressure. Mm. Okay, I was going to take the major headline. Still talking about presidents winding down. <clears throat> it was yesterday at the FEC meeting where he gave his valedictory uh, speech um, at the FEC. Um, yesterday, he also, in fact, according to the Minister of Information, the entire meeting took about six hours behind closed doors where the president was able to address all members of staff, uh, the house staff at the four courts of the presidential villa. He spoke to <coughs> everybody in his team, said that thank you for enduring this, um, enduring my government for the past eight years. He allowed the ministers to say two to three minutes or five to, no, three to five minutes of their own valedictory speech of what the uh, um, various um, ministries have done, their achievements, and just they all just thanked him. And that um, he also said again at this FEC meeting that he's willing, he can't wait to go, that his only passion in his life is take care of his cattle. <laughs> he cannot wait to just go and um, rest. And in the, the same vein, other governors, such as Governor of Lagos State, Sanwolu, also dissolved his cabinet all towards the, um, the swearing-in of, the new, of, of the, uh, the new administration on May 29th. So he also dissolved his cabinet. And um, the HOS had sent a message to all the commissioners that everybody must... Um, leave their office by Friday um, tomorrow. Um, so, I mean, everything is winding down. Everybody's looking forward to May 29th for the new government to come in. And yeah. hopefully when that happens, things will indeed change. You know how we're feeling when Buhari was... I hope we later. go quick. I mm. hope there's no, there's no That's a period. I just hope flying. we start flying. We must hit mm. the ground flying, not yeah. even walking or running. Yeah. Yeah. The ground so. flying, because Nigerians are very, very anticipating the... Uh, assumption of the mm. new. I think new this Dangote refinery thing is also going to work in its favor. Hopefully, a lot of things will, you know, settle. Um, the punch. Week? Yeah. So the federal high court in Lagos on Wednesday sentenced three men: Kasumu Ademola, Saliu Mikailu, and Gani Ushola to 20 years imprisonment for defrauding a stock firm of 45.6 million. Um, just <coughs> Chukwuku Aneke was the one who handed down the jail term after he found them guilty of the offence. The EFCC had arraigned the convicts on four counts of conspiracy, unlawful conversion, and money laundering before the court, to which they pleaded not guilty. Yeah. And they were first arraigned in 2019. <clears throat> they pleaded not guilty to the eight counts, and they were admitted to bail on various terms. 
but the convicts um, in 2021 informed the courts of their intention to change their plea bargain and they pleaded guilty to the charges. So the three were accused of conspiring and unlawfully converting 298,550 uh, stocks of a deceased man, the late Joseph Adeyemi, valued at about 34 million naira. And they were also said to have unlawfully retained the aggregate of the sum, which was 9.481 million in their bank account. So they resumed the hearing and then they've been uh, sentenced to 20 years. So they'll be doing five years each for each of the counts. Okay, moving on to Daily Sun, which is practically not much story. Okay, Mr. Tumpula has taken up all the stories. <laughs> the federal government uh, agrees to refund 192 billionaire Paris Club reductions to governors. And Tinubu swearing in, we trust courts to still do justice after May 29th, says Peter Obi. Uh, nobody has a story. Let's move on now to Vanguard. Refinery will ask Dangote to sell Forex at good rate. Tina Turner, queen of rock and roll, dies at 83. Baja deputy clash at plenary. Um, Kiamo to Buhari. It's unconstitutional to appoint Minister of State. Pressure on me. Can't wait for May 29th. And PPI, bureaucracy, others, scuttle delivery <coughs> of 25,000 megawatts, says investigation. Okay. Um, should I take Festus Kiyama? Yeah. The outgoing Minister of State for Labor and, and, and Employment at the FEC meeting that, you know, you earlier talked about. And um, so he gave a speech. I'm just trying to get like a summary of his speech. Um, what he was just trying to say, he was, he said that uh, Mr. President appointed him as Minister um, of State in 2019, and, but he has something to say that it is not ingratitude. And a lot of people who were in a position the same as he is right now have always wanted to say this, but they didn't want to come across as being ungrateful, which is he thinks is an aberration of our Constitution to have that position, Minister of State. He says even it doesn't really work well because no matter what you do, it's still underneath a colleague. So no matter what your ideas are, before you can even push it to be yeah. tangible or to fruition, it has to go through another colleague who can sort of, you know, subsume yeah. those ideas and make it their own. And he's just saying that this is just, it's not a criticism of the present administration or lack of gratitude. It's just so that we can better develop our constitution and reform, you know. So that was just yeah. basically what he was saying. And of course, being a lawyer, I understand he listed out all the different... Um, places in our constitution that would show us the unconstitutionality of that office. Mm. Okay. So the Central Bank of Nigeria <coughs> Governor, uh, Mr. Godwin Emifile, was speaking yesterday at the end of the 291st Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, meeting in Abuja. And he said that uh, the refinery, that's Dangote's refinery, will be persuaded to sell foreign exchange earnings to banks at good rates. He also said that his team would engage the promoter of the refinery, that's uh, Lahaji Aliko Dangote, to ensure that Nigerians benefit from the venture. Uh, saying that the CBN, the federal government, and the country helped him set up the refinery. And he was expressing optimism that the refinery will ease the foreign exchange scarcity in the country, uh, saying that um, the local refining uh, would be gaining about 20% cost of the total cost of importing petroleum uh, from outside. And that amount, that 20% could be saved uh, for us. And it will go ahead to reduce the prices in the long run. And um, now it's time for us to look at removing the subsidies since we're going to be saving. I think they mentioned the amount we're going to be saving if we're able to get that 20%. That will be yeah. saving about $5 billion to $10 billion in foreign exchange, yeah. which they would appeal to him to sell to the bank. So those businessmen and women who want to import, instead of going directly to the CBN, they'll just go to their banks and get the dollar. So we won't have issue with Forex anymore with Dangote. And so okay. because Nigerians have helped him okay. set up, he must benefit us first. We'll okay, the words, the words appeal yes, and good it's rather vague. It's yeah. not, it's not, for me, it's still it me on easy. Mm. You know? Yeah. It, it gives Dangote a... Some kind of power. Yes, right? some kind of over our whole... I mean, yeah, we'll wait to see what the economy is. He's his investment. Yeah, but Even you say, I will appeal. Yes. A good a rate. A country is appealing to... Um, and who gives you a good rate? Can you yeah. define a good rate? So those are very, very big... Um, and, well, um, we'll see. But we'll see what happens. Hey, let's be optimistic. Let's still celebrate. It was just... No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. We celebrate uh, that. 
Okay, <clears throat> so yesterday, the Right Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, of, um, House, of, House of Representative, um, Right Honorable Femi <clears throat> Bajabia Miller, and his deputy had a back and forth yesterday. The video went viral, <clears throat> and the bone of contention was that there was an announcement on the early adjournment of today's plenary to enable the speaker and members to attend and the commissioning of the permanent site of the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, NILS, uh, which was along the airport road in Abuja. <coughs> so uh, the speaker had said that they should adjourn plenary today because the president was going to be commissioned at 3 p.m. So he said, let us make things lighter so that they, we end at 2 p.m. and then so that they can go for the commissioning at 3. His deputy stood up and said, the job, the members, um, the, uh, the job of the house is to make laws that we don't, must we close the plenary because we're going for commissioning. And that was rather um, interesting because it's, it's, really not, it's, it's usually not a normal thing for um, somebody to speak against. When the, when the speaker has made a pronouncement like that, you're not supposed to really speak against it. But the speaker was able to hold his own and said that, um, um, he was said, Deputy Speaker, I have been in this house long enough to know that it is the first time in the history of the House, that a deputy speaker will openly oppose what the speaker says. So he wasn't saying that we should close plenary totally. We're saying mm -hmm. we'll come, make it a bit lighter, so that we can close at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. and at 10 at 3. Not as if we're going to close at 9 o'clock and the whole day is wasted. Mm -hmm. We're still going to do our work till 2 p.m. But, but the early. man was, but, but those who are saying behind him, the guy is really upset. Well, they are, there's a back end story because he and the speaker are probably having a bit of a strained it issue showed. because he, inter he was interested in... You can tell. The energy was off. It was really yeah, off. Yeah, fighting somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on now to Vanguard. Mm. Let's find a story we've not taken. I think we've taken all the stories. Nigeria Air. Uh, uh, Nigeria Air, you have that story? Yeah. Okay, I was going to move to Tribune, actually. We've taken Vanguard. Buhari seeks Senate approval to pay uh, $566 million and others' judgment debts. Abiyadu Amoson clash over sighting <clears throat> of... Um, Dangote's refinery in Lagos. Tina Turner dies at 83. Or your governor gets sole authority to give chiefs beaded crowns. Um, Nigeria airplane to arrive Friday, says Sirica. Despite Valentrix's session, Buhari fails to dissolve FEC. And health workers set agenda for Tinubu. In fact, I can't, I'm, everything is happening before 29. <laughs> The planes are coming in. In fact, Nigeria's economy ah, just well, bounced the back plane, the Well, the <laughs> plane, according to um, the minister, is saying the aircraft will be unveiled in Nigeria colors. Well, it's not here yet. Oh. Mm, it's, it's coming going Friday. It's coming. That's yeah. okay. It's, never coming. it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Day so, um, he's just explaining that it will be unveiled in Nigerian colors and that everything concerning it is done, nearly 100% done. Um, he says that... Um, that there's something he called, he says everything is on ground, the only item missing. So everything that they had set out to achieve, they have um, to 100%. But the only one item missing on our table is the Aerotropolis. So that's supposed to be like an uh, airport city. So it's all the airports, four of them, free zones to allow you to come in and take advantage of what the free zone is and things like that. So that's the only, the Aerotropolis is the only one that hasn't been completed yet, but they have started and it's 60% you know, done. So they've put in the work so far. The groundwork has been laid, but there's still some more to be done. So at the end of this administration, they can say that concerning the Aerotropolis, it's 60% done, but Nigeria Air is 100% done. But for me, I think 100% is when the aircraft gets has here. Has landed. And has been unveiled mm. in the Nigerian mm, that colors. That means 100%. And operation starts. Don't worry. It's definition. Okay. <laughs> I can Finance assure six. you everything will happen before May 29th. Yeah. I yeah. By <laughs> so Any the, story? Yeah, the relocation of the multi-billion dollar Dangote refinery from Ogun State to its location in Lagos State sparked of controversy. I think you took uh, that story yesterday. Uh, the Ogun State Governor Prince Dakwa Biodo and his predecessor in office, Senator Ibikula Amosu, uh, continued to engage in war of words. So Abiodo had accused Amosu of frustrating the project, which was initially planned to be cited at a local free trade zone. And, you know, Amosu reacted and insisted that the business mogul took the decision to move the project to Lagos State without government interference. Then they went ahead to explain. So he went ahead to explain what exactly happened. He said this started in 20, 2007 and it was a joint venture. The federal government of Nigeria owned the majority of 51% 
Ondo State owned 14.5%, 14 Ogun State owned 14.5%, and Strategic Core Investors 20%, that's uh, um, the likes of Aliko Dangote, and I think he bought out the 20% equity for his for himself, so he was the main investor for that. Now, he said Ogun State was a minority equity stakeholder. If you remember, I just mentioned 14.5% for them. Without proprietary, proprietary. proprietary strength and capacity to take sole decisions on the joint venture enterprise. As a mere holder of 14.5% equity interest, it is most uncharitable for anyone to churn out lies that Ogun State was in a position to unilaterally frustrate the project or was responsible for the logjam. Mm. That Dangote just made the right decision for his business, going for uh, a, a state that had more equity mm. in that. Okay. What's love got to do? Aww. Got to do, baby. Oh. What's well, love? The US born star uh -huh. Tina Turner passed yeah. away at the age of 83 in her home in Switzerland. Um, Brian Adams is one of the people first people to actually pay his tribute. Uh, many of us grew up listening to Tina Turner and her legs were insured. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. I remember all the and stories about her legs. I don't forget Those how legs. her legs were insured. Yes. You know, and we used to dance and just her you know, energy celebrate her. was something yes, else. She was a very, very, very passionate singer. Um, mm. And Jetting. she was one of those so people who were, um, had the strongest vocal, bo yeah. the vocalist, the yeah. really strong vocalist. And um, <clears throat> she was in the league of the Aretha Franklin. Yeah. You know, and you know, she was such a powerful singer and definitely the world will miss a we'll great, miss her, yeah. great performer. And she actually had, uh, she was, I think she battled with liver cancer or something oh, like that. Oh, is that what kind of happened? Cancer. Okay. Um, I think it was, I'm not even sure if it was liver cancer. It was one kind of, one type of cancer I read somewhere. Okay. It wasn't specified here. But she battled with that for a while, I think mm. since the 2000s and she's been struggling. But I mean, she, at least God gave her life to 83 mm -hmm. and that's a good life. In Nigeria, that's party time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm there. I'm telling you, that shut down Lagos, man. But we thank God for her life mm. and, um, and all that she's left behind. We can legacy. actually shut down for her. Let's just do a shwebi for Tina Turner. Yeah. That's all. We can do it. Ladies of your views. <laughs> ladies, ladies. It. Let's shut down. So Tina we'll Tana dance after. It. We'll show our legs and dance. <laughs> ah, it's yep. an eternal leg challenge. Yes. Let's do something like that. You know, I Let's like that. All right. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.